you're it. Because that's what you say when you get tagged in a, in a tag video. In tag in America, you say you're in. In other countries, you're supposed to say you're in. Like, what are you in, mate? Am I, am I not tagged? I'm out? What am I out of? I don't, I don't get it. I'm out of ideas. It's a tag video. That's right. And this video is actually sponsored by YouTube. Can you believe it? The website we're on right now sponsors this video because Shay Carl has made a vlogumentary documentary about vloggers and it's on YouTube Red. And so today, I'm gonna do his tag, the why I vlog tag. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Why slash how did you start vlogging? Basically, I had a lot of free time on my hands. I had recently been broken up with and I wanted to do something a bit more productive. I didn't want to just sit around the house playing video games all day, so I tried teaching myself different hobbies, like learning guitar, for instance. In 2008 and 2009, I started watching YouTube pretty darn regularly. And the thing is, no one else I knew ever watched it. If I ever brought up the fact that I watched YouTube, people would be like, oh, you mean like viral videos of cats and pianos and Nami, Nami. What a lot of people didn't get was that there are people behind each of these YouTube videos and sometimes they make more than that. They actually enjoy making videos and they do it regularly and you can watch more of them if you subscribe. Hint, hint. Now the more I watched YouTube videos, the more I wanted to share them with friends and so I try and go to people's houses and show people videos but I don't think it really works like that. The way that YouTube or at least vlogging works to me is kind of like a 1v1 conversation. Like right now I'm just talking to you but if I brought a friend over to show someone a YouTube video. I find it slightly uncomfortable, especially if it's a vlogger, because it's like, no, this is supposed to be me and this vlogger person. That, maybe that's just me. You can tell me below if I'm going crazy here, but I'd much rather just say, hey, watch this video, and then you watch the video on your own laptop. Not, let's watch this vlogger together. I don't know. It's, we have a relationship, me and the vlogger. That's what we're doing here, okay? It's just me and this guy. Don't, don't, I don't want to menage a trois. Not, not asking for that, okay? Don't swing this way, not happening. <laughs> How did I make this sexual? So basically, when I first started making YouTube videos, I wanted to make a viral video review show. Now, my spin on it was I was gonna do it with less swearing and less bad jokes. And look at me now. I make puns on the internet. Another idea I kind of threw out there at one point was podcasting because iPods were really big back in 2010 and I was like, I've got a laptop with podcasting software. I can do this. But then I realized my laptop also had a webcam and I was like, you know, why don't I just try making a video? And so I did, using my webcam and iMovie, and here it is. Now you've seen me react to some of my old videos before with Dodie, but I missed out on a lot of them. And by missed out, I mean, not even I could handle that cringe at the time, but today I'm going to show you a select sample of some more right now. I, basically what I used to do in my viral video things is after I showed the viral video and like joked about it, I would then give people an update on my life. People that didn't care at all, they just wanted to see a viral video, and here I am like, yeah, also, here we go. I got Bioshock 2 fixed. But... <laughs> These jump cuts are so slow. Your mom is like a social networking site. I'm on her every day. I'm so sorry. What's happening, YouTube? Now, I know I told you guys I had a lot of work to do with homework and schoolwork <laughs> and such. But I just want to let you guys Keep know... Work on your hair. Off. I got a 110 on my last physics test. Yeah, man. Good afternoon, 69% male audience. Wow, that is that is uh that has changed just a little bit. These graphics increase my production value by two hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm done. Okay, you get you get you get the picture, man. The thing is, when I first made that right, I actually thought it was funny, not because it was cringe funny, and that just makes me smile. Uh, Before I continue, <laughs> it doesn't even start with the audio. It's just like here's the intro, and then. Hey! <laughs> anyway, that was the longest answer to a question ever, but I still vlog now because I just love it. What do you love the most about vlogging? I mentioned it in a video three weeks ago. My favorite thing about vlogging is that literally anyone can do it. Anyone can talk to a camera and upload it on the internet, no matter what they're making, and that is empowering to me. Anyone can do it. Anyone can even succeed from it. It's... I never knew this was gonna happen, you know what I'm saying? It's just... I talk to a webcam, and nowadays the cameras on your phones are insane. This one right here shoots in 4K. So if you have a smartphone, you can just make a high quality video. But like I said, I started with webcam. Of course, the state of the game has changed most certainly, but I'm just saying, as long as you're making what you want, it shouldn't really matter. Just have fun with it. Why did I sound so British there? Hello, have fun with it. Gonna have a cup of tea. Who is slash are your favorite YouTubers? Now, I don't shy away from shouting out my faves on this channel. In fact, I do it way too much, but I think I'm a little bit biased because I'm about to say a couple that you've already heard of before. Doty, Luke, and Connie, because one is way too talented at music, one's way too talented at editing, and the other one's way too talented at impressions. Not that that's all she can do. Another favorite I don't talk about enough is My Name's Che. My Name's Che is such a genuine guy, and his videos are just him having fun, doing whatever he wants. It's, it's nice. I like it. I like that on YouTube because there's not much of it left. Now, there are definitely some YouTubers that, over the course of eight years, I've stopped watching, and that's a bit of a controversial topic because it's like, <gasps> what? You stopped watching, YouTuber. Every YouTuber has a lifespan, and the fact that you watch them for so long, I feel like you constantly gotta innovate, you gotta do new stuff, or, you, I mean, it's just boring, 
right? You're just seeing the same video over and over and over. I get it. It's the same joke. You just redid the scene. Like, I get it. But especially for vloggers. Some people, like, grow up with vloggers and watch family vloggers from, like, babies going up into adults. And I get that. But for me, I've got to be engaged. I used to watch so many different YouTubers when I started on YouTube. And I'd be like, oh, I know what's happening with this person, that person, this person. And nowadays, I just follow people on Twitter and kind of catch up on the hot goss later. I kind of miss that aspect of the YouTube community when it was very small and everyone knew each other. And by everyone, I mean... They all knew each other. I was never really a big YouTuber. I was always very small, and so I would just watch from afar and be like, oh, didn't you see that video where she did that thing to him and she was like, oh no. You know the one. It kind of freaks me out that nowadays, like, people are having those conversations about me or Dodie or people I live with, and that it, it's slightly weird and slightly cool, and it's like, uh. Anyway, back on the faves there, I have been watching a lot of H3H3 productions recently. He's been pretty funny, making some fun videos. And lastly, of course, Philip DeFranco is the only YouTuber that's lasted this long in my life. I've watched him since 2008 when I started watching YouTubers, and he just won't die off, man. He just keeps going. He's a truck. He's chugging along. It's because his content is evergreen forever, and it's always topical and relevant, and it's always good, and he's always a good guy, so... Philip Franco, one of my top YouTubers still. I also started watching iDubs when all that drama started happening a couple months ago, and I was like, now I need to watch this one to find out what's happening with this guy, and then this guy has a video about that one, and this one has a video about Drama gets them views! What slash who inspires you to keep vlogging? You know when you've had a bit too much alcohol and you can't remember how to walk, but your legs just keep moving anyway, and you're like, wow, what? I know it sounds a bit deep, a bit scary there. That's kind of how I feel about vlogging, only because I never really knew what I was doing, and I just slowly walked into this. Like, it's not like I went, this is what I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna make it a job. If you didn't know this, I haven't had a full-time job in like six months. This is now paying bills and stuff, which is weird. I didn't set out for that, and it just happened. It happened upon me. I slowly walked up the door to the YouTube job, and it happens. I mean, YouTube has always been a hobby for me, and it still remains a fun hobby for me, a hobby that is now luckily a job. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that that has had a big effect on the quality of my content recently. You could tell me in the comments. Here comes constructive criticism. I mean, this video itself is an ad. <laughs> I'm a sellout. But I mean, the real thing that inspires me and gives me fire to keep vlogging is when I have real-life meetups. I mean, nice comments are always the best, like getting something in the comments that says like, oh, I love this video so much, Evan, you're funny. Oh, go on. But in real life, I don't know, that just gets me. Like, when I had a meetup in Stockholm this week, and there was 50 people in a city, in a country I've never visited, that knew who I was, um, and they liked me, and it was just, whoa, oh, oh man. And when they come up to me, and I have conversations with different people, and they tell me like, oh, this video really helped me find out who I was, like my sexuality video that's helped a lot of people, despite how much I'm still scared to talk about that. Like, that makes me so happy, knowing that I've I had a positive effect on people's lives, uh, I've helped them with math, or I've helped them find out their sexuality or something, and I don't know, that is really what gets me, and I want to make more videos that are helpful. I mean, my main goal with YouTube has always been to make people laugh, but those videos that I make that just are a bit different, those are my favorite, so... I'm hoping to make more like that soon. I have a bit of a personal one, maybe coming out next week, or maybe the next week after that. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready to talk about it yet, but... Yeah, look forward to that, and thank you very much for watching my videos. Anyway, thanks for watching this tag video. I mean, I love tag videos. They haven't had a good one in so long, so I'm actually going to be tagging my friend Luke, Cutforth, and Dodie to tell me why they vlog. But anyway, if you haven't signed up to YouTube Red yet to watch the amazing tours on Fire, what's wrong with you, man? You are so late. You might as well do it right now to watch the vlogumentary. Why? Because it's really cool that Shay Carl has now brought this thing that is niche to me into the mainstream a bit more to make me feel slightly validated, the fact that vloggers are getting a documentary about them that maybe mainstream media will take us a bit more seriously. I always count stuff like this as wins for us. I mean, this is kind of the chillest and easiest brand deal I can do. I mean, sign up to YouTube Red and watch the documentary because it's supporting YouTubers and I'm all about that. Anyway, if you want to subscribe to my channel, I make new videos every Sunday, so you can subscribe. Do that, wherever that button is nowadays. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. So around 2000, I keep moving my hands and you, I always move my hands, but you can't see them when the camera is in the normal position. And now I'm like really self-conscious. Hey Siri, can you call Connie Glynn? Calling Connie cooked rice, please. <laughs> hey Connie. What's up? Could, could you come to my room real quick? Yeah. Could you push a button? I can do that. Can you Thanks. just hit the button that's turns off autofocus because I can't do it because as soon as I get it turned off then it's not focused anymore. Right there on the right of the barrel. This? Yep. 
All right, you ready? Yep. That was not it. That was the disconnect the lens from the... Okay. I just asked you if it was the button. Right... This one. No, nope, no, no. It's going to be right here. This? It says M, right? It says... Well... It says M. It says M. <laughs> I... What the fuck? I mean, now it's not... You can't do it now because you're covering the camera. Oh, it's right fucking there! There's one button!